Of all the mysterious and creepy artifacts unearthed from ancient Egypt, mummies are the most fascinating and terrifying of all. These wrapped relics were once some of the most powerful rulers of the bygone world, straddling the space between humanity and the divine realm beyond. Pharaohs were the most likely candidates for mummification. Still, there were many others who got the grim treatment as preparation for their journey to the Fields of Aru, Egypt's version of heaven. You might think you know all there is to know about these shriveled grave dwellers, but there's a lot more to mummies than meets the eye. Here are 15 fascinating secrets that you've never heard about mummies. Mummified pharaohs became demigods. Pharaohs were already exalted above other people on Earth, but death catapulted them into a whole different league. The ancient Egyptians believed that mummification and other rituals associated with pyramid lore would prepare the king for his otherworldly journey while keeping his body intact in this world, just in case the soul wanted to return. The fact that pharaohs could go between two worlds made them unusual, extraordinary, and almost like deities. Dead kings were often worshipped as demigods for this very reason, taking their place with titans of the Egyptian pantheon, like Ra, after they shed their mortal coil. You might think that the Egyptians had a monopoly on mummies, but this simply wasn't the case. There were plenty of other cultures that got their mummification on too, as our number 14 pick illustrates. The first mummies were South American. Although most people think of Egypt when they picture mummies, real scholars know that the first people to wrap their dead in preparation for the afterlife were South American. The ancient Chinchoro people lived in what we know today as Chile and Peru, and were mummifying people before the proud Egyptian civilization was ever even a glimmer in the eye of the universe. The Chinchoro developed the process in the arid Atacama Desert, a whopping 2,000 years prior to the Egyptians. Remarkably, mummification was very much the same, despite the gap of time and oceans between the two cultures. The Chinchoro took out the vital organs and preserved the bodies so that they wouldn't decompose in the dry desert heat. In a strange twist, they also painted their mummies black and sewed their eyes shut for reasons lost to time. Cats were mummified. In ancient Egypt, cats were linked with the sun god Ra, and were even personified in the goddess of the moon, Bastet, who had the head of a cat and the body of a woman. Although cats weren't gods themselves, they occupied that middle space between the divine world and the human one as demigods and occasional messengers. Like pharaohs, this spiritual elevation gave them a one-way ticket to the fields of Aru, so it should come as no surprise that these feline companions were often mummified alongside their human owners. Mummifying pets takes on a whole new significance when you consider our number 12 pick. The mummy-making process took over two months. Making a mummy wasn't an easy or quick task. In addition to the logistics of preparing a pharaoh or his trusted kitty for a trip to the world beyond, there were spiritual concerns that had to be taken care of as well. On the physical side, all internal organs needed to be removed and placed into decorative and sacred jars that would then be buried with the mummy itself. The shell of the body needed to be dried out completely before being wrapped in almost a thousand yards of linen strips. Each strip would be painstakingly adhered to the mummy with sticky resin to ensure that no moisture could get in. The mummy needed to be sanctified by a spiritual advisor before being freed of its human spirit. Mummies have their mouths open. It's no doubt that mummies occupy a ghoulish place in our pop culture and folklore, and this nasty little tidbit just may have something to do with that. Mummy candidates would often lose their front teeth thanks to the ceremonies performed on the bodies, and the Egyptian mandate that mummies needed to have their mouths pried wide open. We can only speculate that this strange burial ritual was related to the afterlife, but it's certainly a macabre twist on the already grisly procedure. Our number 10 pick illustrates why you shouldn't mess with any mummy, no matter if it has its mouth open or closed. Mummies are very cursed. Mummies are notoriously cursed, as Brendan Fraser reminded us in his late 1999 hit, The Mummy. Still, fact might be stranger than fiction when it comes to the whole host of nasty spells and incantations that swirl around these sleeping pharaohs. The most famous cursed mummy is King Tutankhaten, the boy king more commonly known as King Tut. His curse involved striking down anyone who came into contact with his tomb with sickness or death. Even skeptics have to admit that the sheer number of victims taken in by Tut's undead rage is staggering. There are plenty of other curses floating around the tombs of ancient Egypt, 
and unsuspecting adventurers should be aware that they might just stumble onto something scary and supernatural from the deep past. Number 9. Frankenstein Mummies Exist Far from the sweeping golden sands of Egypt, on a mysterious Scottish island are some of the most peculiar, puzzling, and petrifying mummies that have ever been on Earth. The clad Hallen mummies defy understanding and are a true perversion of nature. At 3,000 years old, these mummies predate Egypt's by 1,000 years. Preserved in this still Scottish peat bogs are Frankenstein mummies. Skeletons cobbled together from many different bodies to form freakish creations that archaeologists don't quite understand. Why were the clad Holland mummies pieced together that way? We might never know, but we can speculate that ancient mummies might give us a clue to our present and future. Number 8. Ancient mummies had a modern ailment. Spanning the globe, civilizations, and time frames, many mummies had one thing in common. They might have suffered from heart disease in their lifetimes. We tend to think of heart disease as a modern ailment brought on by too much KFC and our ever-expanding waistlines. But history tells us that bum tickers might not be totally our fault. Enlightened ancient Egyptians had atherosclerosis, clogged arteries in layman's terms, and they never even heard of a drive through if our healthier ancestors had hardened veins and heart problems, are the Doritos really to blame? Number 7. One pharaoh traveled with official documents Since they were discovered, archaeologists have been removing the mummified remains of Egypt's exalted kings, stirring up the past, and possibly setting off several different curses along the way. Mummies have crisscrossed the globe, but only one was stylish enough to actually get his own passport. Ramses II was one of Egypt's mightiest pharaohs, who traveled first class all the way to Paris. To make it official, he was given a passport, proclaiming him as a deceased king cleared for travel. Unfortunately, Egyptian royalty wasn't always treated with such care as our number six pick illustrates. Maybe there was a good reason for all those old mummy curses after all. Mummies were used as decor. Stunning, but true. Actual mummies were all the rage when it came to home decor in the 19th century. Yes, those kooky 1800s were a time for bizarre art of all types, and the bodies of long-deceased pharaohs made incredible conversation pieces when propped up in corners, lurking in parlors, or even haunting bedrooms. People made up elaborate stories about their mummies, claiming that they were biblical figures or famous cursed pharaohs. Whether or not they really were cursed is anyone's guess, although we can't think of any better reason for undead Egyptians to unleash their wrath than being displayed in a hallway. Except for maybe our number 5 pick, which is just ghoulish beyond belief. Victorians unwrap them for fun. The Victorian era was a spooky time, as evidenced by the liberal use of arsenic for freckle treatment and death photography, where the recently deceased was photographed in a lifelike and endlessly creepy fashion. One of the weirder and more cringeworthy aspects of Victorian culture came in the form of mummy unwrapping parties. Back in the lawless European 1800s, you could get mummies on any street corner. Victorians in the know would bring back their wrapped dead treasures to be laid out and unwrapped at that night's festivities. Of course, the amateur mummy unwrappers did tons of damage to the artifacts themselves, but with the mummy surplus of the time, nobody seemed to care much. Number 4. They were repurposed as paper. Our number 4 pick might be a touch more mummy speculation than mummy fact, but there are some who swear that it's the truth. Around the turn of the 19th century in the United States, there was a vast paper shortage that led to a boom in demand for Egyptian mummies to fill the supply. Gimmick, fact, or sensationalized fiction we might never know, but there are plenty of famous accounts that seem to confirm that long-gone pharaohs might have gotten a second life as humble paper. Mark Twain once joked about scrawling his tomes on kings, a reference that may confirm the dirty little secret that the paper industry doesn't want you to know. If you thought that was disrespectful, wait until you hear about our number three pick. Lesser mummies were used as fertilizer. It's hard to imagine mummies being pulverized to bits, but that's precisely what happened during the 1880s, see a theme here, when many lesser mummies were transformed into fertilizer for a booming European market. Most of these mummies were animals. The remains of cats, baboons, ibises, and lizards were often mummified as companions to the pharaohs or gifts to the gods. These mummified creatures were scooped up and shipped out to help grow the ghoulish gardens of middle-class Europeans. Incredibly, mummies were also used for something else as recently as 1964. Number 2. 
they made great art. Mummy Brown was a popular paint color made of, you guessed it, ground up mummies. This gruesome contribution to the art world supposedly stayed in vogue until 1964, when the black market mummy sale dried up and no more paint could be produced. Mummy Brown was a greenish reddish brown that apparently faded quickly into an ethereal backdrop, making it ideal for a lot of landscape paintings. Many people thought that the mummy part was a hoax, and when it came out that real long past pharaohs had been ground up for the pigment, many artists buried their tubes of mummy brown, hoping to give the disgraced kings a proper burial again. Number one, we used to eat them. Have a headache? Eat a mummy. Although it wasn't all that cut and dried in the 16th and 17th centuries, dried up mummies, or mummia as they were called, were often consumed by highborn sick folks. While snacking on the dried up corpses of ancient Egyptian pharaohs might sound bizarre to us, it wasn't uncommon for people of the time to indulge their cannibalistic side. Mummies also came with a big dose of spiritualism, and many people believed that they could tap into the mystic elements of Egyptian culture by snacking on a long dead king. Yummy. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to What Lurks Below.